Hello, my name is ESO and today we're going to be mapping the Elder Scrolls 6 using official maps to discover the meaning behind the official tweets from the Elder Scrolls single player games account that placed three candles over a map of Skyrim and Hammerfell with the message transcribe the past and map the future and then a picture of a book. What's crazy is that after researching everything you can find at each candle's location across all of the Elder Scrolls games, I've discovered that they're all in fact connected. In this video we will be translating other worldly languages and looking at the stars of Tamriel for more information on the Elder Scrolls 6 and some of the storylines that might be going on within it. Now if you have not seen my last video where I go into detail about my theory on the Elder Scrolls 6 being based in High Rock and Hammerfell, please go back and watch it or this video simply won't make any sense to you. I've linked that video down below in the description for you. Now the theory within that video does still make sense, but since creating today's video I have overlaid multiple maps to check exactly where the candles have been placed in Skyrim and Hammerfell and it actually gives us more huge hints about the Elder Scrolls 6, at least definitely being based in Hammerfell if that wasn't already obvious from the original teaser trailer that Bethesda revealed. So let us begin our journey and a shout out to Joe Sire Thompson who pointed out the exact candle placement with a very insightful comment that inspired this video. However, not completely accurate. So let's pick that apart. So as you guys can see, this is a map of Tamriel. And what I've done is I've overlaid loads of different maps in Photoshop from the various Elder Scrolls games so we can actually tell exactly where these candles are placed because some of them actually give away more storyline. And also, just for your information, someone's made this incredible map that actually shows you the location of every Elder Scrolls game ever. So you've got Skyrim just over here, and you've got the Elder Scrolls Shadow Key here, and Daggerfall over here, and also Redguard where we visit Hammerfell. So let's go ahead and zoom into the province of Skyrim. I've overlaid Skyrim's map over the region of Skyrim. Now, as you guys can see, it lines up with the borders absolutely perfectly. What I will mention though, is if you look at the black dots that represent Markath, Dawnstar, Windhelm, Falkrith, and Riften, they're actually not in the correct places compared to when the game was actually made. Like if you have a look at Falkrith, Riften, Winterhold and Dawnstar and Solitude, all of those cities and towns are in the correct position. So all of those line up. However, if you look at White Run and Markov, they're completely off. So there are some discrepancies between these maps before we start to move on with this video. So now we've got the map of Skyrim accurately placed, let's move on to the Twitter post that was made by the single player Elder Scrolls Twitter account and also the single player Instagram account as well. Now this image has the placed candles and it's going to show us the exact locations these candles are actually placed as you can see on the map. I've lined these up extremely accurately based on the border of Skyrim and Hammerfell. Now you can see there's a little bit of a slight angle change because the photo was taken at an angle whereas the original map of Skyrim was taken straight down. So you can see there's a little bit of blurriness on the right hand side but for the most part all of these borders match up perfectly which is really important for the next part. Because the first candle I want to take a closer look at is the one that's technically in Hammerfell across the border from Skyrim which is the third candle from yesterday's video. Now I said in my video that the candle was in fact sitting above Dragonstar but if you have a look it's not sitting above Dragonstar as you can see. It's not actually on any city. Now in terms of my theory from yesterday's video still being accurate, Dragonstar is still going to be in the game, it still has a huge arena, so it still wouldn't surprise me that the Elder Scrolls 6 will have arenas within it. That was even the plan with Skyrim but they were actually scrapped, I've already done a video on that too. What's most important is that that candle is still obviously in Hammerfell, 
But what location is it hovering over? Because that's really important to know. And then we're actually going to go back and look at the second candle as well, because there's a little bit more information about that too. And next, we're actually going to need to come to the map of the Elder Scrolls Online. As you guys can see, Western Skyrim is just over here. That was the latest DLC for the game. The Reach is just over here. And then you've got Bankarai and Craglord. Now, the border for Skyrim basically sits along here. So Craglord is basically in Hammerfell, and that's where the candle is actually hovering over. But if we click on the zone of Craglord, you can actually see the Dragon Star Arena just over here. And then also, if you go right down to the south Ellen here, the Great City is located over here. So... So if I literally take that map and I line up Dragonstar and Ellen here together and then I go back and I look at where the candle actually is, you can see now we're going to have a location. And just so you guys know, I know the zones of the Elder Scrolls Online overlap into each other. It's just the way the game was designed. Now I will say in terms of accuracy, some of these zones do exist within their own spaces. So for example, if I click on like the Falkreef hold it's literally just one location that includes Falkreef and then it's just surrounded by like the abyss. So what we've done now is we've zoomed in between Skyrim and Hammerfell and this is also High Rock up here by the way if you didn't know and then on the bottom right corner this is Cyrodiil but specifically we're looking at Skyrim and Hammerfell right now. So now if I overlay that map from the Elder Scrolls online from Craglorn we can actually see at the top left, the Dragonstar Arena and Dragonstar the Town sits within that black dot on the map. And then Ellen here on the bottom right, which is a huge city, is partially covered by that black dot and it's got those mountains as well. And also Craglorn pretty much fits on the border of Skyrim. It does go somewhat into the mountain range of Skyrim, but it doesn't overlap so that makes sense. Now before we go on, if we do overlay the candle at this point, you can see the nearest settlement is Balkroth, to the southeast. But the candle itself highlights the resting place of Anka Ra, one of the original warrior band of the Ragada who invaded Tamriel from Yakuda in the first era. In short, they then settled in Hammerfell and became known as the Red Guards. But I think we need to overlay some more maps to actually get an accurate idea of what this candle is highlighting in Hammerfell. Now currently we have just been using official maps, but I couldn't help but use this map because it's actually pretty damn accurate. This map here was made by the Tamriel Rebuilt team, and it is drawn at a slight angle I believe, so I have kind of tilted it beyond its north point. But as you can see, Dragonstar and Ellen here both line up on this map too. We're going to use it again in a moment. But first, let's go back to our Elder Scrolls Online map, and then we're going to go ahead and place the candle. Now, going back to the official Twitter image, I've lined it up perfectly with the border to Skyrim and Hammerfell and High Rock and Cyrodiil once again. I've absolutely pinpointed exactly where that border is going to be located on the map. So let's go ahead and get back the map of ESO. Now you guys can see where this candle falls. Now this is as accurate as I could get it. And if I go ahead and zoom in, we can see the, the exact location the candle is sitting on. Now what you'll notice is there's actually no towns or villages near this candle. Apart from, apart from Belkarf, which is actually as close as you can get to the candle which is why i also included this other fan-made map because if i line up the cities perfectly with this belkarth guard actually lines up perfectly and i will say that the guys who made this map actually went off data from the elder scrolls arena and so on it is very accurately recreated which is why i'm using a fan-made map in this video so it actually sits directly on belkarth guard which is a location that existed in the Elder Scrolls arena. So to be as accurate as possible here, we can also bring in some other maps from the Elder Scrolls arena, a game many of you have probably never played. And this right here is Hammerfell, High Rock's over here, Skyrim's over here, the Imperial Province is over here with Cyrodiil. But I don't consider this map entirely accurate. I think the game's kind of progressed a bit further past this. 
What you will see if we line up the three points of the map, Skaven, Dragonscar and Ellen here, and then we go ahead and we put the candle on it, you can see that it's almost over Belkarf Guard as well. Almost, not, not quite though. I guess if we orientate it more like this and then do the candle again, it's kind of still over it but then the towns don't match up with their exact locations. So in conclusion, the third candle is placed above Balkarth Guard, a town you could visit in the Elder Scrolls 1 Arena and the Elder Scrolls Online. In the Elder Scrolls Arena, the town had no quests attached to it other than being a possible random starting location after you escaped the Imperial Prison. In the Elder Scrolls Online, based in the Second Era, 8, 864, way before the events of Skyrim Civil War, Belkarth is home to the Stargazer's Observatory, and there's a whole questline in the Elder Scrolls Online that resolves around that story. Specifically though, keep the Stargazer's Observatory in your mind, since we will come back to it. But first, we're going to go back and take a look at the second candle's placement. Now let's go back and take a look at the second candle here, because it's actually placed over three locations in the Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Now there are lots of interactive maps of Skyrim that actually pull actual data from the game. So as you can see, I'm here above Solitude, and this is using in-game map data, so it is 100% accurate. And if we go ahead and overlay that exact map data over the lay of the land here where the candle is, you can actually see which locations fall underneath the candle's placement. I also made another version so you guys can very clearly see. We have one, two, three ships. Also, just to mention, I overlaid the map of the Elder Scrolls Online as well, and there's nothing found in this area beyond the city of Solitude. But the candle is not placed over Solitude. So back to Skyrim. Firstly, we have the Wreck of the Ice Runner, an Imperial ship which crashed here east of Solitude. The ship was transporting passengers and cargo between Solitude in Skyrim and Anvil in Cyrodiil. You can actually find a book on Velek, San Pirate King of the Abyssinian Sea. The Abyssinian Sea is located south from Hammerfell. Secondly, as mentioned in my last video, we have a ship named the Kataraya, which is Emperor Titus Mead's the second ship. And the ship only appears at the end of the Dark Brotherhood questline where you are sent to assassinate him in Skyrim. Since the Elder Scrolls VI will follow on from his death after the Fourth Era, I'd not be surprised if the trademark term Red Fool is referring to the Fool of the Empire and not the Fool of the Red Guards, as many of you mentioned in my last video. Funnily enough though, the ship is also where you find the unique weapon Windshear, which is a curved sword from Hammerfell. But even more interestingly, the third ship under the candle is the ship called the Deity Slowed. Now this is the only ship that is present at the start of the game. To get the Ice Runner to crash, you need to start the quest Lights Out and go to the lighthouse to turn out the lights and then the Ice Runner will crash. And then to get the Emperor's ship to appear, you must reach the end of the Dark Brotherhood questline when the Emperor arrives in Skyrim. Now there are a few strange things about the Deity Slowed ship. Firstly, the Corsairs, or pirates, aboard the ship are not wearing the standard Corsair armour. If you check their bodies after you kill them, you'll actually find two of the Corsairs are wielding curved swords from Hammerfell, and also Red Guard boots. This would imply that these are obviously pirates and they've at some point visited Hammerfell and taken some of the clothing they found or stole there with them. Now the fact that they have scimitars and red guard armour would not be so unusual if in fact these are the only pirate mercenaries in Skyrim, the only NPCs in Skyrim that are actually wielding these scimitars and red guard boots. You see, the only other NPCs who use them in the game are the pirate king of the Abyssinian Sea, the Alkir mercenaries in Whiterun who also hail from Hammerfell, and Nazir, who is also from Hammerfell, basically every single other NPC in Skyrim who uses the Red Guard armor and has access to a scimitar is from Hammerfell. So it's rather specific that these pirates have been to Hammerfell. Because most importantly, if we come inside the Deity Slowed ship, 
find the desk of the first mate who you can kill. On his desk, you will find a copy of the firmament. Sorry if I'm pronouncing this stuff incorrectly, by the way, I am dyslexic. It was not just one copy that's on his desk though. I can understand if there was one, but there are specifically three of them placed here, which is what made me really look into this book specifically. Let me explain. This book is all about the 13 star constellations of Tamriel. Three of them are major constellations known as the Guardians which are the warrior, the mage, and the thief. And these constellations protect their chargers from the snake, which is the 13th constellation. The serpent moves throughout the sky in the different seasons, threatening each one of the guardians. Now, if you remember back to the observatory location in Belkarth Guard in Hammerfell, well, this book is very much connected to that quest that takes place during the Elder Scrolls Online. In short, the warrior, mage, and thief guardian star constellations fall from the sky, entering the mortal land of Tamriel as celestial beings. Powerful ethereal beings, but still in their mortal form. And you must save them from the serpent during that quest line. Alternatively, this connection could be a complete coincidence. I mean, it's understandable that any sea wayfarer or pirate would need to understand star constellations in order to navigate the sea. However, the fact that there are three books specifically placed here still does seem like a bit too much of a coincidence. And obviously the red guard clothing and the curved swords. Everything does point towards Hammerfell. Now speaking of Hammerfell, before we go into detail about the third candle's placement, the Firmament book has two versions. There's another earlier version that was written in the Elder Scrolls Adventures, Redguard, called Folke's Firmament. There was also an observatory in the Redguard game located in Stross Mackay, where you could actually look at the star constellations. But it was an ancient Dwemer structure. The observatory had an ancient star chart on the ceiling which depicts the ancient Dwemer complex understanding of the stars. But actually, if you look at the pre-Red Guard Yokudans, they actually had a detailed understanding of the stars themselves, and which they drew in the sand. You can see it was almost as advanced as the Dwemer, depicting the radial configuration of the constellations, but some of the runes are shown as circles and squares instead of the true form depicted by the Dwemer. If you also take a look at the actual Elder Scroll itself, you can see similarities to the star map. Now this particular Elder Scroll is the one that you steal from the Imperial Palace in the Elder Scrolls Oblivion, and it depicts the Thief Star Constellation which makes sense since it was used to break the curse of the nocturnal cow. Now the stars of Tamriel are very much interlinked in the creation of the mortal realm where Tamriel exists. Bear with me. There's a book within Morrowind and this book is titled Lorcan and Satakal. If you did not know before Tamriel existed, the god Lorcan tricked the other Aedra gods into creating Mundus the mortal plane where Tamriel, the continent that we know today, exists. After this creation in the Dawn Era, Akatosh, the chief god, called a convention to decide Lorcan's punishment. This convention is recorded in the book Lorcan and Satakal. Akatosh is represented as Papa and Sep is representing Lorcan. After Akatosh hit Lorcan, a quote from the book reads as follows. While the rest of the new world was allowed to strive back to godhood, Sep, being Lorcan, could only sink around in a dead skin or swim about the sky, a hungry void that jealously tried to eat the stars. Now I believe the dead skin is a reference to snakes and the serpent does indeed swim around the sky to try and eat the other stars, as written by all of the Elder Scrolls astrologers. In fact, in the Elder Scrolls Online, this actually happens. You can even battle Lorcan, but after his punishment, he is very weak compared to actually fighting a god. The thief star sign in its mortal form even says during that quest that the serpent is a deceiver by nature because the serpent is the god Lorcan trying to regain his power. This also explains why the serpent has no season and it doesn't act like a normal star constellation. 
In fact, I don't believe the serpent is actually made up of stars. It's just formed of glowing energies or holes to oblivion, which makes up another part of Lorcan. The celestial guardians are indeed just that. They were created by the other Aedra gods to hold Lorcan imprisoned in the sky. But why is all of this even important? Well, we know from the Elder Scrolls lore that after the creation of the mortal realm, Lorcan's punishment took place at the convention, a meeting of all of the Aedra gods to discuss Lorcan's punishment. This meeting took place in the Dereni Tower or the Adamantine Tower. This is also the oldest tower in Tamriel since it was the first to be created and it exists within the Iliac Bay between Hammerfell and High Rock, which I believe the Elder Scrolls 6 story will take place revolving around this tower. Let me explain. Multiple towers actually exist throughout Tamriel and they were all created by the gods and it's believed that they are in place to stop Nern or the mortal realm from dissolving back into oblivion. In the Elder Scrolls game, these towers always revolve around the central main story or plot of that Elder Scrolls title. For example, in Skyrim, the Snow Tower, according to the book The Dragonborn, when the Snow Tower lies sundered, kingless, bleeding, this prophecy in the book The Dragonborn is actually referring to the mountain, the throat of the world which is also depicted on Alduin's wall. And that prophecy is fulfilled in the fourth era during the events that take place in Skyrim. Then we have the White Gold Tower in Cyrodiil, which is powered by the Amulets of the Kings, given by the Aedra god Akatosh. When Uriel dies at the start of the Elder Scrolls Oblivion, the Oblivion gates open due to the weakened barrier. And then, when the amulet was actually destroyed, for a moment it completely deactivated the white gold tower and let Dagon actually pass into the mortal realm from oblivion. But when Akatosh's avatar reactivates the tower, it ends up banishing him, assumingly reactivating the power of the tower. And then again, in Morrowind, the story revolves around the Red Mountain, which is actually a tower that was created when Lorcan's heart was tore out by one of the Aedra gods, Trinamac, and then given to Auriel, who fired an arrow to create the Red Mountain Tower. Obviously, that tower exploded. It's now destroyed, along with Lorcan's heart. These towers being destroyed is part of the Thalmer's ultimate plan to achieve divinity. Essentially, the Thalmer think that destroying all the towers would stop the cycle of death and Mundus. And then Mundus would dissolve back into its original state, unbound by mortal laws of physics, reality, time and space. Which sounds absolutely crazy, but that is the Thalmer's ultimate goal. And the first Adamantium Tower is in Iliac Bay, and it may be used in the Elder Scrolls 6's story. And now we're going to go back to the third candle. And obviously, as I said in my last video, this candle sits upon the book, specifically on top of the book instead of on the map. And next to it, we have the collectible coins, one of which is the two moons that have cultural significance to the Khajiiti culture. Now, I do think with the space star theme we have going so far, these two moons are rather important in the riddle in this theory. And I already spoke about them quite a bit in my last video. Where did the two moons disappear to for two years? Will it be revealed in Starfield? Nern roots are in Fallout 4, they're all connected. Okay, moving on. Many of you mentioned in the comment section of my last video, the candle might be placed on a location that's beneath the book. And if we take a look at that for a moment, the candle is positioned on two locations that we can explore in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Let's take another look in game now. So as you can see on the map, Winterhold is just over here and Dawnstar is over here. Now on the map above Winterhold, we can see the College of Winterhold, but just to the north, there's kind of like these two big rocks with Yistgrimmar's tomb on. To the left of that, we have another two rocks, which is the Tower Stone, and also Yingvild and Hella's Folly. Now I know, because I've completely checked out Yingvild, there's absolutely nothing there. So I think this candle is referring to Hella's Folly. 
So let's go ahead and fast travel there. Now Hella's Folly is basically a shipwreck yard, home to a Argonian named Decus. Now he's actually a Dark Brotherhood contract as well, but it's not really important to the storyline. He basically just dives around here and tries to find loads of trinkets and gems. But the most important thing is this bear trap in front of this chest which is locked. And then you're going to go ahead and loot this chest. Now this chest has a chance of containing this book, Nagasta Kavata Kavakas. Now this is a very interesting book since it's written in a language of the Slodes. It has a chance to spawn here in a fetch quest called Fetch Me That Book but it does exist specifically in this location. And the reason why I'm referencing it in this video is because the ship that we just looked at is called the Deity Slode, and it literally has a slode at the front head of the ship carved into it. It could be another coincidence, but there seems to be quite a lot of those in this video so far. So after doing a ton of research into this, I found the Imperial Library apparently the Slode's language in the Elder Scrolls is a variation of a made-up language called Esperanto, with a few variations added to it. There was a rough translation on the Imperial Library, but it seems like a very private easter egg reference that doesn't really make sense unless you're on like the inside of the joke. Luckily for us, there's a guy called Tia Marie, not to be confused with Anne-Marie, and he's translated this on his website, since he is a slowed with access to the internet, clearly. And this translation, I mean, honestly, you can pause the video and read this for yourself. I think it's a very personal Easter egg and I'm still looking into it. I'm going to have to speak to someone who's actually written this book because it just seems so detached. And it's remained a mystery for over 10 years now. But if you have played the best Elder Scrolls game ever created, the Elder Scrolls Adventures Redguard, based in Stross Mackay, an island off the coast of Hammerfell, you'll know that Nagasta is the writer of this book. Nagasta is a sea slowed and a necromancer. Now there is another ancient historic connection to Hammerfell and the Slowed. Since the earliest Ragada settlers landed in Hammerfell around, around the first era 808, the Slodes have taken advantage of their custom of burying criminals on islands off the coast with the bodies being used for necromatic practices and small invasions into the mainland. While the Red Guards eventually removed these invaders, Sightings of the Slowed living along the coasts of Hammerfell have continued, so they may very well be present as a race in the Iliac Bay between High Rock and Hammerfell. Will this influence the plot in the Elder Scrolls 6? I'm not quite sure. Because also, if you draw a line between each candle, you'll actually be able to confirm not only the Elder Scrolls 6, but the Illuminati. All I've found looking at the details of where these candles are placed, like you guys, told me to in the comment section of my last video is lots of fingers pointing towards Hammerfell at each opportunity. I also think that I'm starting to lose my mind in connecting literal star constellations together but there's a lot of coincidences in this video and if anyone with an open mind wants to theorize anything further beyond what I've stated here please do go right ahead let me know in the comment section I always love to hear your opinion because it inspires me to do more research and I definitely will be doing some more research into these strange findings. So stay tuned and subscribe for that my battle brothers.